begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, once again we are gathered around the table of the Lord in this virtual space that we share. And uh, we celebrate today the feast day of St. Catherine of Siena. And we include in our Mass today all the prayer intentions that you have uh, shared with us. For all of those who are celebrating special days today, I pray in a special way for a dear friend and Jesuit batchmate, Father Tony Basilio, who is celebrating his birthday today. As we come before the altar of the Lord, we are reminded once again of our need for God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your church, grant through her intercession that your people participating in the mystery of Christ may ever exalt in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, Fellow children of Israel, be careful what you're about to do to these men. Some time ago, Theodas appeared, claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him, but he was killed. And all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men, and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. So they were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ, Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. 
Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he knew himself what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled Twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Do you know anyone who seems to go through life unfazed? Like, no matter what happens, things around them might be chaotic or uncertain. They remain calm, focused even cheerful. When I did my uh, clinical training, I worked as an intern in a university counseling center, and my supervisor, who was a crisis counselor, was one such person. She had a very serene demeanor, and even when the cases she was handling were really very challenging, like severe anxiety or depression and even suicide, She remained steady, unruffled, and able to do what mattered. My fellow interns and I said, oh, we want to be like her when we grow up. And whenever I encounter difficulties, I try to channel her as much as I can, but I am not always able to do so. Um, As Christians, we are not exempted from facing difficult and even seemingly insurmountable challenges. With so much darkness and uncertainty in today's world, we may lose heart and be afraid. Yet our readings and our feast day today remind us once again that we are a people of courage, not of fear. There is a line in today's responsorial psalm that can be a powerful mantra, a chant, and a prayer refrain for these days. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. What does it mean to have courage, to be stout-hearted? The saint we are celebrating today, Saint Catherine of Siena, 
is an example of this stout-heartedness. She is proof that even in the Middle Ages, a woman can be a powerful agent of change. St. Catherine of Siena was a mystic and an activist. She was not afraid to speak truth to power. She became involved in the fractured politics of her time and was instrumental in the return of the papacy from Avignon in France to Rome. And the Pope himself entrusted her with many missions, particularly in establishing peace in the warring Italian city-states. For her writings and her work and her witnessing, St. Catherine has been declared a doctor of the church. Of course, St. Catherine was simply following in the footsteps of the earlier apostles. Our first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles is a continuation of the accounts of how the first disciples encountered tremendous persecution and endured intimidation and physical torture. And yet, as the passage tells us, the disciples rejoiced that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus. What gave them this kind of courage? Were they really not afraid? Dear friends, I believe that Christian courage does not mean that we do not experience fear. But Christian courage stems from the belief that there is something or someone greater than our fear. Because of this, we are able to do what truly matters. The words of Gamaliel, the Pharisee and teacher of the law, offer a very important insight. He reminded the rest of the Sanhedrin to be careful not to get in the way of God's design. He declared, if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourself fighting against God. This, then, is the source of Christian courage, the conviction that our God will sustain us. Our gospel today of the multiplication of the bread and fish is a reminder for us that God can multiply our meager efforts and supply us with more than what we need. Perhaps we can take some time today to look out for signs of how this continues to be experienced in our world today. Perhaps we can pay attention to how so many men and women of goodwill continue to strive for what is truthful, for what is good and just, and they are being sustained and their efforts multiplied. Perhaps we can focus on individuals who embody for us this conviction to trust in the power of the Lord and fight for what truly matters, despite prejudices against their gender or personal convictions. Yes, looking around us, there's a lot of reason to despair. But we are an Easter people. Let us echo the psalmist and proclaim that the Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom should we fear? The Lord is our life's refuge. Of whom should we be afraid? That we believe that we shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. And so, dear friends, we wait for the Lord with courage. We shall be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. Jesus multiplied loaves and fish on the mountain to feed the hungry multitude. Let us pray for the needs of the hungry and the poor, for the strength to come to their assistance. 
Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the ministers of the church may feed without fail the people of God in the table of the word and in the table of the Lord's body, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That government and civil agencies may attend to the people's need for food, shelter, and security, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Like the boy who offers five barley loaves and two fish, may we be generous with our little resources, which the Lord will multiply to answer the needs of many, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. As we pray for those who are hungry, may the Lord touch our hearts and open our hands to feed them, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. And we thank the Lord for the gift of food that restores our strength for those who work to produce what we eat, and for those who prepare it at table, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We also pray for those celebrating their birthdays, especially Chito Puno, Toby Ignacio, Father Francisco Malyari S.J., Father Tony Basilio S.J., Dr. Raymond Alonso, Christopher Tan, Erwin Lee, Joan Acido, Elaine Suwati. Also for the healing of Sophia Innocentes, Emily Quaso, For the repose of the souls of the following, Mary Concepcion, Leopoldo Jarencio Valcarcel Jr., Rosalinda Manaay, Sailin de la Pasion, Teresa Ignacio, Miguel Antonio Macuha, Ed Milana, Alicia Tiu de Jesus, Father Alfonso Nicolas S.J., Josefa Ramos de la Rama, Portia Cabuncal, Marcelo Owano Jr. For the special intentions of Maritzi Quintos, Rosalie Valera, Ricardo San Andres, grade 7 classes of Claver, Collins, Colombier, and Corby of the, S of the Ateneo Junior High School, Las Torta Cluster, also for the special intentions of Edmundo Villana. And for all our special intentions, our personal intentions, and those intentions sent to the Facebook pages at JustCom and Radio Katipunan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, open our eyes that we may see the deepest needs of men, women, and children. Teach us the generosity that welcomes the hungry, the thirsty, the strangers, and those who suffer in any way. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Onesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Catherine of Siena, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, as even in this world it nourished the life of St. Catherine, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Let us go and proclaim the Gospel with courage. Thanks be to God. Diyos nasa krus ni Jesus Ang siyang sa mundo'y tumubos Langit at lupa siya'y papurihan Araw at tala siya'y parangahalan Ating pag-iwang pag-ibig ng Diyos sa tanan Alleluia At isi